Oh, it's too much. Good teaching. Look, see, I'm going to roll now. Like Mr. Don't say, man, I'm going to roll now. I'm going to roll now. Am I on Facebook Live? Am I on Periscope? Good morning. You are with us. Good afternoon. Praise <laughs> what have we been doing? Oh, this is a whole bunch of phrases. Jesus. I told those people I had a mic in my home in my hand by 11 30. Tweet it out. I tweeted out this morning. Tune in. I'm going to be preaching, ministry, teaching, laying hands on sick, cast out demons by 11 30. But the Holy Ghost took over. And when the Holy Ghost take over, I heard one preacher said, You can't interfere with that. They said, Got some preachers who will stop it. He'll shut it down. But you can't mess up what God is doing. Bless it. Some people can be healed during the praise. Healed and delivered in the worship. But anyway, so I'm in my prayer closet and I can't pray on Wednesday. I'll give her a mic for me on Wednesday. And he said, I want you to pray a prayer on the third hour. The third hour is in Acts, the second chapter. The third hour is when the Christian church was founded, was established, was started. Y'all hear me? I want y'all to know what hour the church started and the third hour of the day. 9 a.m. This is the day that there was a mighty rushing wind came in and the tongues and the spirit defied and cloven tongue over 120 in the upper room. It was in the third hour of the day. It was when everybody filed out of the open, the upper room, came outside, everybody was in tongue. 104. Can you imagine being around 120 people and all of them in the holy prayer language? All of them in tongue. So the people came out and said, oh, what's wrong with these people? These weirdos. What's wrong with these people? They must be drunk. That's it. They are drunk. They said Peter rose up and said, mm, mm. they are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that. This is that. Which the prophet Joel or Joel when he said I will pour out my spirit upon all that the prophet Joel prophesied in the third hour of the day this would happen so the third hour of the day he told me go on and pray but it was a special prayer Praise me. that's what he told me he said and it won't be your prayer he said it will not be your prayer he said I will, it would be my prayer I said what he said, it won't be yours. So guess what, y'all? I started guiding my hands. And I went to the Bible. And he took me to Exodus, the 15th chapter. And showed me the prayer. Good God of mine. I read it and it blew my socks off. I couldn't wait till the third hour came. I was ready then. And this was about 8.30 a.m. I said, I'm ready for the third hour now. The prayer was from God. Exodus 15 chapter and it was verse 1 through 19. It was God's prayer. Moses was in the house. You understand me? Aaron, Miriam. So I had my shawl on. And know what else he told me? This is what I want you to name it. I want you to name it. Prayer for blacks who are being shot by black and blue. I didn't think of that. He told me. I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget it. I said, what you want me to call it? He said, yeah. That covers it all, doesn't it? Doesn't that, doesn't that cover the murder spirit mm -hmm. in our community? Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Talk to me, church. Yeah. I'm right. I know I am because God is right. And he told me to do it while I'm in my prayer closet slash war room. So when I put that song on, prayer song on, and the third hour, and I begin to deal with that prayer, let me tell you something right now. That prayer is a hit. All races have contacted me over that prayer. You hear me? 
when you get little Caucasian ladies in their fifties and sixties contact you and, and, and retweeting it, blacks, browns, whites, they have been retweeting it. Oh, they've been retweeting so many times and they fun and texting me, emailing me about that particular one, and I love it. Now. You said that you watched it. Yes, I did. Now, I want you to tell them what you told me about it. I mean, no, come over here. Come on, talk to them, Mike. Yes, one of the men asked about the hoodie. Hmm. Okay, say it. He asked about the hoodie. Yeah, he said if I was wearing a hoodie. So you said, this is not no hoodie. This is a prayer show. You need one. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, just like Moses. Just like Moses. How about the one that called in and said, said, um, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't believe in your religion. That's what he said. He said he didn't mean to be and then I said, this is not about religion. I said, I hate religion. And so does Jesus. I said, this is spiritual. I said, let me tell you something right now. The only one concerned with color of people. I said, God is, more, is concerned with you being saved or unsaved. And un a non-believer or a believer. He looks on the inside of us while man's looking at the outside. That's a problem today. But you said you watched it twice already. Yes, I watched it twice. And what's your feeling about it? Oh, good. I mean, I wish I would watch it all the time, every day. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. So then one man come on and he said, um, 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 he did, I can't remember the part, but he said um, that he don't believe. You said, that's all right, too. Yeah. That's all right, too. Keep on listening. I said, that's okay. Keep on listening. Keep on I said, I love all people. Yes. I said, I love all races and all people. I said, I'm like Jesus. Yes. My concern is if you're a believer or a non believer, you save the unsaved. Yes. That's my job. Yes. You hear me, y'all? Yes. Thank you. Now, let me confirm that what you just said. I'm laying in the bed two days ago. Lord spoke to me again. Know what he said? He said that that thing is not a one time thing I did. He said to me that he's going to give me, I'm not going to pray my prayers. Do y'all know he's already shown me two more prayers in the Bible? I wrote them down, two more already. He told me that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the name on it. And each week, I'm going to come out and I'm going to send it out. He said it's going to the earth, it's going to people to shut that murder spirit down in our community, among our people, in the United States of America. Y'all hear me? Give God praise up in here. Hallelujah. Give God praise up in here. Say supernatural. We're talking about spiritual things, y'all. We're talking about spiritual things. Supernatural. Another thing, too. Get your arm ready. You know why? Because Vance Trump just reminded me that every year we ask the Lord to give us a supernatural flu shot. Amen. Flu season is supposed to be upon us, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. You can go take all the flu shots you want. You can't pay me to get a flu shot in my arm. That's right. Never had one, never will get one. God told me don't come near that thing. Oh, and by the way, I have a preacher friend, licensed ordained minister, told me that he was going to get a flu shot a couple years ago. I said, Minister Leon, don't do it. I said, man, God got me releasing a supernatural flu shot that'll keep. He said, no, I'm going to go ahead and get it. I said, don't get it. Guess what? He came back to me. He said, man, I wish I had listened to you. He said, ever since I got that shot, I've been jacked. He said, ever since I got that shot, man, I've been messed up. He said, I wish I had listened to you. He said, I'll never take another. Do you hear me? Another thing. I, I, mean, I got you, Frazier. Another thing. Bad Strand came out recently on the flu shot. It was on TV that they were in some state, I don't have all my facts because I didn't go get it, but I saw the news, that the flu shot was, was making them sick. Everyone who took this particular one, it did something to them. And they all had the same symptoms from that particular flu shot. So they had to go in and Flip it. 
You hear me? So before we give you a supernatural flu shot from God, say it, Frazier. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Hold on. No, come on up here, man. Come on, man. Bring the mic up here, Frazier. No, but come on, man. No, I want to hear it. Because a lot of people got flu shots which they had never gotten. Including probably some of y'all in here. And let me tell you another thing. Some people got flu shots and got the flu anyhow. Y'all hear me? No one in my house has gotten the flu. They may get attacked with a little virus, weakness when they got to stay in bed, some type of something attacking them. No flu. Week one, week two, week no flu. You understand me? Because this supernatural shock from God works. Nobody in my house. Can't remember the last time I had a flu. Probably 20 years ago. I don't know. But y'all will get that shot. A supernatural shot in your body from God. And you ain't getting no flu. I know that's bad. I'm going to say again, you ain't getting no flu. And I'm an English major. Please. What were you going to say about that flu shot? Um, well, five years ago, yeah. Jesse Body went through it. Hold on for a minute. He was arrested. I, hold on, man. I was just going to say, man. We don't know Jesse the Body been to. Yeah. I mean, I don't look at wrestlers now, but back in the day, I liked Jesse the Body Venture. What about him? He was doing a, um, he had a TV show. Yes, he, he was doing wrestling. I forgot the name of it. Okay. But one of our own scientists said she fled the United States because she had a, um, a lady that was telling her that they about to do a massive, what they call it, a holocaust or something like that. Oh. Where they're going to be, they're going to put stuff in flu shots, nasal spray, and something else. I would be surprised. They're to take it, and it's going to kill us slowly. It ain't going to kill us fast. Well, well, that's what they call chemical warfare. Shot. But that's what they call chemical warfare. Y'all, let me show you how chemical warfare is real. Anyone ever heard of Agent Orange? Yes. 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 You ever heard of Agent Orange? Yes. Well, thank you, my There are men of all colors all over this country that are still suffering. Still suffering. They're old now, yes. Yes. and they never got their help. From the VA for Agent Orange. This country tried to deny Agent Orange, but they couldn't because it's real. Many of the armed services people got shots that ruined their lives. Guess what? They had a man on the news who lived down in Florida last week. I don't know why they brought it up again, but guess what? He said, I got problems with my liver. I got problems with my kidneys. He said, I can't work. He said, I, I, I got problems with my heart. He said, everything in my body, there's something wrong with it. He said, why? He said, because they had this thing in the armed services that you come in and we'll pay you to be able to do this. Give you a shot of use of medication. He volunteered. He went and volunteered it. He said, you know the medical people? He volunteered. And it messed his health up for life. Whatever it is. This is why I pray for y'all to come off medication. This is why I want y'all to get medicine free. Uh oh, hold on here. Woo! And now I can say it, Evangelist Crump. I can say it now. What I said Friday night, I've never said it before. Let me see one hand of all of your life going to church. Did you ever see a display of any medicine in the church? Come on, let me see your hand. Hold on. Well, that's legal medicine. Have you ever seen it in a church in your life? Not one hand. 
We can go to Joe Austin Church probably with 23,000 people ask the same question, not one hand go up. TD Jakes with 15,000, probably not one hand go up. I'm not, hold on. I'm, let me get the other medicine. Uh, uh, are y'all ready for the other medicine? <laughs> Have y'all seen this medicine in a church before? Y'all ain't seen that medicine right here? Jesus Christ. Hold on. Surely. Surely. But this is legal now. Marijuana is legal now. You seen this in the church for medicine? Have you seen this on display in the church? Surely with all the smokers on the deacon board and the trustee board and the, and the choir, surely you see some cigarettes pulled out of the church. No. No. No, you haven't. Now, this is what God gave me Friday night while I was preaching it here on Friday night. Did y'all know that Satan has blessed many of our churches? Uh-oh, I done done it now. I done done it now. I'm going to say it again. Satan, Lucifer, the devil, has blessed many of our Christian churches. Many other mega churches have been blessed by Satan. Now that revelation came from God to me. He said, this is why many of the churches have gotten distracted from his spiritual power. This is why many churches have three to five services on one Sunday so the Devil bless them with all them people running in, running out, so that they won't be able to lay hands on the sick. They don't have time. Churches don't have time to lay hands on you when they got three or four or five services on Sunday morning. They don't have time to cast that demon out of that person back there growling. Out of that person with a suicide deed. They don't have time to break those generational curses off you. I got a piece. I got to preach 20 minutes and get you out of here because I got more money coming in. Yeah, I said it. Satan has prospered so many churches on purpose to keep them away from the supernatural power of God operating in them. Many pastors won't touch these things with a 10 foot pole. They're not going to do it. They're not going to take time to do it. They got to hear me in your sweet, sweet service. A sweet sermon and get you out of here. Right now, some of them are on service number three or four. Already. But hear me. So Satan... The book I read one time called The Drift of the Church. When the church, their church was first established, small from the grassroots, they lay hands on the sick. I have people come in here and say, oh my God, I haven't seen this in years. We used to do this. Have preachers, we used to do this. I used to be in a church that did this, but they stopped. Why did they stop? The drift of the church is the number one reason is prosperity. Yeah. See, when the church was just church. making it, and just start our church, right. come out in the name of Jesus. Right. Be healed, Captain. Be healed, Sister Diabetes, right now. Yeah. But when the people started coming and they began to increase, and the money began to increase, they began less and less power. Until it got to the point where it was no power anymore. I want to add a third service, I want to add a fourth service, fifth, and smile them all the way to the bank. But then you got people in there with sugar diabetes, people in there with colon cancer, and women, I tweeted it out this morning. 14,000 women died last year of ovarian cancer. 14,000 of you had a demon in your womanhood. To kill you. Women. 21,000 women a 
year uh, diagnosed with it and the, the medical scientist said it and it's too late. By the time they diagnose you, you're a dead woman walking. That's a demon from the pit of hell. Satan hates your guts, woman, ever since his encounter with Eve. You're supposed to bruise his head and he's going to bruise your heel, woman. He has a special interest. This is why when you have a demon messing with your womanhood, this is why you have stillbirths. This is why you have a premature birth. This is why you got sick babies with no arms, no leg, blind, have a brain, and have everything else in your womb because a devil is interfering with you. This is why some of y'all who are married can't have a baby, infertility demons, in your womanhood. And a church don't even mention your womanhood. I ain't never been one to mention womanhood in my life. They won't even mention your period that you had for three months. You done gone to your third month of the same bleeding and they ain't even showed you, my God, the one with your blood yet. They ain't released it yet. Come on here, y'all. We must be on fire for God. We should have the blazing fire of God burning all over our church. The blazing fire of God to be burning all over the preachers, burning all over the pews, burning all over the building, burning all over the choir, burning all over the usher, burning all over God's people. The fire, once you get this fire, we don't want to ever let it go out. They don't want that fire. Talk too much. Oh, God. Talk too much. Yes. Yes. What are you doing? To give them everything. Yeah. Cost you everything. Yeah. Then we got people hooked on. Obedience. Hold on. Pastor comes in here. A pastor. Pastor comes in here. I bring up medicine. She pulls out a bag of medicine. I need some air now. I'm getting hot. I need some air now. Fire. Say it again. Fire. Come on, man. Y'all, give me some air. Listen to me. She comes in here with her medicine. Now I told you, you know what she said? I realize that I have gotten addicted. Y'all hear me? She's the pastor. Can she say, I'm addicted? I don't want to be addicted. And sure enough, she gets in our car with her grandson, and before she stopped the car, she passed out from the addiction. She went unconscious with a child in the car. I believe it was God that kept her from from not driving. What would have happened if she had been on the highway with her grandson and passed out? She passed out in the parking lot. God, he had to shake her. He had to shake her to get her up. This thing is serious, church. She's a pastor. I preach up Northwest and I tell them about, about this. I preach about signs and wonders and miracles. And the pastor of that church on Kennedy Street, Northwest, at the old Kennedy Theater, he said, I have a confession to make. I said, What is it? He said, I can't go to sleep without sleeping pills. Jesus. In the preacher's own pills. I mean, the preachers are opiates. How I many preachers are addicted to painkillers? Just to get a preach to you. Hmm? I mean, a lot of them. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Miss Lord. Thank you. Even Prince and Michael Jackson. Yes. Yes. Prince and Michael Jackson. OD off of legal medication. Opioids. Oh, by the way, let me tell you, is moving. Y'all ready for this? You can keep it out the church if you want to. There's a new clientele for opiates now. Ooh, what? There's a new class of citizens getting addicted to painkillers now. 
Guess who they are? Just came out last week. High schoolers. What? You heard me. High schoolers. Getting addicted to painkillers. Oh, boy. Not only that. Guess who else? College athletes. It's a quarterback. College. Nice guy. He hurt his shoulder. In football. The doctors are handing out this stuff like it's no tomorrow. So the doctors gave him a painkiller for his shoulder. When the painkillers ran out, and he couldn't get no more painkiller medicine, he started taking heroin. And he was a college quarterback. Guess what, y'all? He went to rehab. And he still came out. The same day he came out of rehab. I said the same day, didn't I? The same day he came out of rehab. He went and caught the same day and died that same day. Of an overdose trying to get some opiates in his body. He died the same day off of heroin. Because guess what? He was addicted to painkillers. This thing is real, y'all. This thing is real. When your mama came here from West Virginia, from West Virginia last week, and spent a week with us, what's her name? There's some serious stuff in here. Said she had to take this to live. Said she had to take this to live. Live, live, live. I got to take this to live. I got to pop these to live, and I'm a child of God. I got to pop these to live, and I believe the word of God that says, by his stripes, ye are healed. But Satan loved to bring us some symptoms. Church folk deny that they're healed because of a symptom. Church folk doubting God's healing power. Uh, and you got some people saying, that was when the disciples are old. There's no more miracles now. Let me tell you something right now. Did the Holy Ghost come? Then there are miracles. Did the Holy Ghost come? Yes. Huh? I read something last night that caught my eye in a book. It said that the disciples of Christ had some problems. They followed him on top of the twelve. They hung out with him, slept in the same room, saw the miracle. But guess what? Some of them denied him. Scattered when trouble came. Am I right? Didn't believe, doubted. Am I right? But when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Ghost fire fell, he said, wait here, tarry here till the promise of the Father is coming. Just wait. And I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So when the fire came and the baptism of the Holy Ghost came on them, guess what? They became real followers of Jesus then. Guess what? They didn't run no more. They were bold of when they, once they got their fire in them, guess what? Ooh, they didn't die anymore. Once they got their fire with them, guess what? They died for him. They would have told everybody about him then. There's something about getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost fire before you get bold enough ooh, to serve him like you're supposed to. You gotta get the Holy Ghost. You gotta get the Holy Ghost. I gotta get the Holy Ghost. And all I'm gonna come off of this, I gotta get the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not gonna stand for toxic medication to dwell in the same temple as Him. How are you gonna dwell in the same temple when I got the Holy Ghost? Come on. Say that. Not gonna happen.
Ain't no wrong with a cigarette. It's legal. It's not, it's not an opiate. No, it's a spirit from the pit of hell. Yeah. Why am I going to have tar and nicotine? Hold on, hold on. Years ago I heard this. How do you expect to cast a demon out of somebody? How do you expect to lay hands on somebody and heal them from, us, from sickness and disease? And you can't even take authority over a, over a, a, a piece of tobacco. <laughs> With some tar and nicotine. But yet you will take authority over the powers of darkness. <laughs> it is deep in. It's real in the ground. You're supposed to be taking authority over the powers of darkness anywhere that they come. You're supposed to be able to lay hands on folk and they live and not die. And you can't get power enough in you to say, to put this out of your hand. <laughs> and don't even go to the lottery ticket. <laughs> and don't even go to the scratch off. <laughs> no, don't even go to the scratch off. I'm holy. I'm sanctified. I believe God. Sir. Could you play uh, <laughs> six 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 for me, please? Straight. <laughs> Can you play six 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 for me, sir? Yeah. Three dollars. Three dollars on six six six. I had a dream last night. <laughs> so you go in there and play the mark of the beast. And if you win. Your life is going to be jacked. Everything you touch is going to be cursed. Oh, what's the, what's the number for death? I believe it's 715. I dreamed of somebody dying last night. But you were just singing in the choir yesterday. <laughs> you just ushering people into the sanctuary yesterday. I saw you run around the church shouting and saying, I'm healed, I'm healed. But yet you want to run over there to the harbor and gamble. Church, the powers of darkness love churches with no power. It loves people from churches with no power. It loves people who don't want the spiritual things of God because if you don't want the spiritual things of God, then guess what? You're going to get hissed up. Hissed up. Now here we are. Oh, that's right. Come in. No, that's right. I told you I needed you on Sunday, Miss Long. Just remind me. I told you I want you to get that mic. Uh uh, you gotta tell this. Ooh, give it to Miss Long. Uh uh, you gotta tell this testimony. Cause this is real. Um, Pastor was talking about pharmaceuticals. Well, my grandmother, um, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and she was wandering off. And she lived with my aunt that lived in the county, in the country, I mean, serious country. And she would walk out the house, leave, and they wouldn't find her for hours. Ooh. So my aunt refused to believe that her mother was had Alzheimer's. And so what she did was took her to another doctor. And when the doctor, my aunt was to bring all of her medication. Hold when on. She came. On this new doctor, they said bring every medicine that you were taking. Right. So when she got to the doctor and he saw all of this medication that, that she was taking, uh, he said, she doesn't have all her She doesn't have, have it. This medication has taken her out of her mind. Wow. Hold on. The doctor said that she really don't have it. It's, but it was the medication that was messing with her mind. And the other doctor diagnosing it as Alzheimer's and the medication he was poisoning her mind with is what was doing it. Right. So when my, when they took her off of all of the medication, she came back to her senses. She didn't have Alzheimer's. She knew everybody. Reg, you hear that? How old they was and all of this. And wow. So she came back to herself. And she, she passed away, but it was because of internal bleeding, but it had nothing to do with she, she didn't have Alzheimer's once they switched off. No Alzheimer's. No Alzheimer's. Thank you. Lots of medication. 
มาดิเมนชีน I hate dementia. I hate Alzheimer's, and I hate that flesh-eating disease called diabetes. I want diabetes gone out your body. And guess what, y'all? I get a phone call this morning. Pastor, I want to come to church, but I can't stop urinating on myself. Pastor, I want to come to church, but I can't stop peeing on myself. Tell you something right now. Thank God for those intercessors that were in here this morning. Ooh, when I walked into this church this morning, they were walking these aisles. They were exalting the Lord. They were touching all these seats to bless them. They were throwing up the heavenly language, and they were all over this church. When I walked in, my God started getting drunk in the spirit when I walked in. I felt the power of that thing. Guess what, y'all? I couldn't even go to my office. I went and dropped my briefcase off. I couldn't even sit in my office. I had to come back out here and soak this up. And while I'm sitting soaking up, I get the call. So I said, Lord, all of this glory is in here. Release it to her bladder. Release it to her mm, kidney. Release it to her bowels. Uncontrollable. Do you know what you feel like everywhere you went? You sit down and pee in the chair, or have a poop in it. And you're a grown human being. You know how many people are going through that? The diaper ain't enough, y'all. If y'all don't get this stuff, if y'all don't stop praying for the sick, if y'all don't get in this Bible, if you don't stop praying more, worshiping more, come to church more, follow God, if you don't be bold enough for the Lord, then who, who will go for us? Yes. Who shall I send? When are you going to say, here am I, Lord? Yes. Then said I, here am I, Lord. Send me. Yes. 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 Send me. Yes. I ain't smoking no more. Send me. Yes. I ain't drinking no more. Send me. I'm not smoking reef anymore. Send me. I'm not having sex out of wedlock anymore. Send me. Amen. I'm not a man sleeping with a man anymore. Send me. I'm not a woman sleeping with a woman anymore. Send me. I'm not cussing anymore. Send me. I'm not just watching pornography. I'm not masturbating anymore. Send me. I'm not gambling anymore. Send me. I'm not sitting around watching just any old thing come on TV anymore. I'm not one of those Christians that was sitting at home Wednesday nights that are coming to church trying to see what Empire is doing. <laughs> You're a Christian, you're watching that, you're ashamed of yourself. That's right. Okay, you don't like me no more. That's right. Come on now. I've been delivered from people. That's right. That's right. Say it, Pastor. And guess what? I'm not running for any office. <laughs> Vote for me. No. I said it and said it again. If you're watching Empire, mm -hmm. you're sitting at home watching Holly or whatever her name is, Cookie. <laughs> then you are in error and some of y'all in here is like all the other Christians in their home Wednesday night watching that crap from hell oh pastor you've been a fanatic okay well let's see how fanatic the Bible is the Bible says in all that you do do it to the glory of God hold on in everything to the glory of God. When you watch Empire, you're watching everything that's opposite of the commandments of God. Come on right now, say it. In Empire, they got every sin known to mankind going on. And you say, I'm a Christian. I'm not doing those things, but it's okay to watch them. Wrong. Wrong. Because there are such things as spirits. And the Bible said that Satan is the, the God of this world, but he also said he is the prince. Satan is the prince. He is the prince. He is the prince of the power. Hold on now. What power? Power of the air. Of the air. 
What's in the airway? Television. Internet. So, here you are. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm on fire for God. But I can watch people cuss, fornicate, lie, steal, kill. So what's happening is while you're watching it, guess what you can't do? You can't hear from God. Because now Satan is blocking your spirit. See, it comes into your mind first. Then it comes right. into, but then from your mind going to your spirit. So your spirit is now getting contaminated. Hallelujah. Praise. Come get to me, y'all. Come on. And say, so have been an hour yet? No. Two o'clock. Okay. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Now get this. Do you watch it? But I don't partake. You watch the people drink liquor, but you don't drink. So in other words, you are now partaking in those evil deeds. That's right. That's right. If, hold on, get this to you ready? He just told me to tell you this. The, the TV is coming into your living room, coming to your bedroom, coming to your house, all right? Yeah. What you watch is coming into your ear hole, but it comes into the house, right? Yeah. Okay. Then why did the Bible say Many are entered into the world, many deceivers are entered into the earth who believe not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Oh, you better hear me now. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. He said, There are many who transgress and need breaking all moral and godly rules. Yes, yes. And they transgress and they abide not in the doctrine of Christ. They have not Christ, then they have not the Father. He that has Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come in, here we go. Here it's coming to your TV, coming to your house. If there come, oh, if there come in unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Ooh. What? Was Empire praising God Wednesday night? <laughs> bring him not into your house. Let me see. Did Cookie throw down her knees at the altar? Oh, she was at the altar, but it wasn't godly. Was her son and that husband of hers, whoever he's supposed to be, did he lift his hands to praise God? Whosoever bringing not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. It's so terrible that God said, you can't say, ooh, that was good. Have a, can't wait till next week. Have a good day till next week. <laughs> Neither be him God's speed. Because if you do that, you are now a partaker of their evil deeds. And you say, I said you are now a partaker. It's in 2 John. Now you're a partaker. It's coming to your spirit, coming to your house. We got children in the house. Guess what? Now, everything in your house is a partaker of it. That means that if Satan gets his stuff in your house, there are going to be some curses following it. All of a sudden, now your money's not right. All of a sudden, now your mind is not right. All of a sudden, now, from I don't know where you're wearing. And I don't know where it comes from fear. You lay in the bed and it looks like you're fearful. Panic attacks are coming. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, people in the house are arguing like crazy. You don't know where it's coming from. It's coming because you got a prince of the airman coming in your house. Amen. And you're a Christian. Talking on fire for God. Flaming fire. Flaming fire. If I got flaming fire, I got no business that strange fire coming to my bedroom, to my living room. 
into my family room. Strange fire will mess you up. Strange fire comes from hell. You can't compromise the holy fire to sample strange fire not even for a second. Hallelujah. It was only one time. That's all it took. I don't do that there. I don't do what they're doing, but they are entertaining me. Whoa, did you see it? I saw preachers. I'm in the barber shop. One day last year when it was on, I'm in the barber shop. And the ministers in the barber shop. Whoa, did you see him partner that door? <laughs> whoa, I can't wait. And then they start talking about the what's going on. And I'm sitting there, so they preach the gospel. Do you see how ignorant Paul said, I would not have you ignorant. He said, Satan don't give him a foothold. Many of you are in unawares. And he's ready to trick you. You're in unawares of the spiritual repercussion. Y'all better get this thing together. If you want to be strong, if you want to be healthy, if you want to have a sound mind, sound bone, if you want to have sound money, sound relationship, if you want to have a sound job, you want to have a sound family, sound children, then you better stay spiritual with God. Yes. Yes. Ain't no power in the flesh. When you watch the empire, you watch anything like that, you're in the flesh. And once you come by the spirit, once you come by that fire, come on the fire and eat the flesh, you're dead meat. You're dead meat. You're dead meat. And you'll go into the store and buy this. I'd have been in underwear. Friday winter, I'm a 7 Eleven man. I always go 7 Eleven. I've been to Wawa probably one time in 10 years. The only time I went to Wawa was when I went down to preach in Norfolk, Virginia, and the hotel was in Chesapeake, we went to Wawa, and they got a whole lot of good stuff. So Friday, I said, you know what? It's 7-Eleven right across the street from it in Waldorf. On Branch Avenue, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to Wawa. I'm going to do something different today. So I went to Wawa, and I walked in. Get a picture of this. When I walked in, <laughs> this is called Zap's Voodoo Chips. Yeah, okay. You keep being angry here. The world ain't playing with us. Voodoo Chips. <laughs> 17 children to you. How many families came in and thought it was funny to buy Voodoo Chips? <laughs> Believe me. Got it? Oh, it's real pretty bad. It was real pretty. Real decorative. Real colorful. Yeah, they got voodoo dolls. Yeah, got voodoo dolls with pins in them on here. Oh, y'all. Probably. You get it? Hold on now. Hold on. I'm going to read something to you. Uh-uh. Now. Now. Now, get this. Louisiana got a lot of problems. Am I right? right. Katrina came where? Mm-hmm. To New Orleans. Mm-hmm. What state is New Orleans in? Louisiana. Yeah. And the Mardi Gras in what state? Louisiana. I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to say it on Periscope and I'm going to say it on Facebook Live. When Katrina hit New Orleans, God showed me that many of the great big millionaire pastors with mega churches made a big mistake with New Orleans after Katrina was over. Many of them did not do what they were supposed to do. Guess what they did? They did what man do. I'm not even going to call their names out. But, but, but every name, you know them. And the ones that didn't have a big name, same thing for them. But I'm talking about the ones that had a big soapbox to stand on and the whole world to hear you speak. Know what they did? When Katrina came through, the flood was gone. They came down and delivered water, food, and clothes. 
control. But not one of them said, New Orleans, you are the number one voodoo state in the United States of America. You have centuries of voodoo root doctors who do in your generation. New Orleans, you are known for voodoo. At the football games, you advertise voodoo. On the beer commercial, you got a voodoo man with skulls around his head talking about the beer. You are voodoo. Why didn't a preacher come down and say, let me tell you, I got a word from God. If my people who are called by my name I forgive your sins and I heal you all. I heal Louisiana. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, my God, my God. I put that look under my foot. That's right. Amen. He said, he should have said, you are as a state. Pray for forgiveness and have a nationwide re repentance. Repent and renounce your voodoo spirits. Renounce and denounce satanic forces. Yeah. And you won't teach your child and your grandchild what your oh grandma and your mom yeah. taught you. You'll turn from voodoo yeah. and declare yeah. and repent. Yeah. But you don't have it anymore. But they didn't do that. Not one of them did. No. And here's what happened now. You better hear me now. I'm saying this because on this chip, who are who, who on this chip? New Orleans, kettle style voodoo. New Orleans, kettle style voodoo chips. Are you kidding me? They just had rain, thousand year rain. Huh? And more floods. The land hasn't been healed yet, that's why. That's right, that's they, right. The governor can't do nothing. Obama can't do nothing. Those preachers, Paul Morton can't do nothing in New Orleans. Yeah. The Blake brothers can't do jack. I'm going to too much good teaching. Look, see, I'm going to roll now. Like Mr. Don't say, I'm going to roll now. I'm going to roll now. I'm on Facebook Live. I'm on Periscope. Good morning. You are with us. Good afternoon. Praise <laughs> man. Who is it? What have we been doing? Oh, this is a whole lot of praise. Jesus. I told those people I had a mic in my home, in my hand by 11 30. Tweet it out. I tweeted out this morning. Tune in. I'm going to be preaching, ministry, teaching, laying hands on sick, cast out demons by 11 30. But the Holy Ghost took over. And when the Holy Ghost take over, I heard one preacher say, you can't interfere with that. There's a guy, some preachers will stop it. He'll shut it down. But you can't mess up what God is doing. Bless him. Some people can be healed during the praise. Healed and delivered the worship. But anyway, so I'm in my prayer closet and I can't pray. On Wednesday. I'll give her a mic for me. On Wednesday. And he said, I want you to pray a prayer on the third hour. The third hour is in Acts, the second chapter. The third hour is when the Christian church was founded, was established, was started. Y'all hear me? I want y'all to know what hour the church started and the third hour of the day. 9 a.m. This is the day that there was a mighty Russian wind came in 
and the tongues and the spirit, the fire and cloven tongue over 120 in the upper room. It was in the third hour of the day. It was when everybody filed out of the open. The other room came outside. Everybody was in tongues. 104. Can you imagine being around 120 people and all of them in the holy prayer language? All of them in tongues. So the people came out and said, oh, what's wrong with these people? These weirdos. What's wrong with these people? They must be drunk. That's it. They are drunk. They said, Peter rose up and said, mm-hmm. They are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that. This is that which the prophet Joel or Joel when he said I will pour out my spirit upon all that the prophet Joel prophesied. In the third hour of the day this would happen. So the third hour of the day he told me go on and pray. But it was a special prayer. Praise me. That's what he told me. He said, and it won't be your prayer. He said, it will not be your prayer. He said, I will, it would be my prayer. I said, what? He said, it won't be yours. So guess what, y'all? We started guiding my hands. And I went to the Bible. And he took me to Exodus, the 15th chapter. And showed me the prayer. Good God of mine. I read it and it blew my socks off. I couldn't wait till the third hour came. I was ready then. And this was about 8.30 a.m. I said, I'm ready for the third hour now. The prayer was from God. Exodus 15, chapter, and it was verse 1 through 19. It was God's prayer. Moses was in the house. You understand me? Aaron, Miriam. So I had my shawl on. And know what else he told me? This is what I want you to name it. I want you to name it. Prayer for blacks who are being shot by black and blue. I didn't think of that. He talked to me. I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget it. I said, is what you want me to call it? He said, yeah. That covers it all, doesn't it? Doesn't that, doesn't that cover the murder spirit mm-hmm. in our community? Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Talk to me, church. Yeah. I'm right. I know I am because God is right. And he told me to do it while I'm in my prayer closet slash war room. So when I put that song on, prayer song on, and the third hour, and I begin to deal with that prayer. Let me tell you something right now. That prayer is a hit. All races have contacted me over that prayer. You hear me? When you get little Caucasian ladies in their 50s and 60s contact you and, and, and retweeting it. Blacks, browns, whites, they have been retweeting it. Oh, they've been retweeting so many times and fun. And texting me, emailing me about that particular one. And I love it. Now, you said that you watched it. Now, I want you to tell them what you told me about it. I mean, no, come over here. Come on, talk to them, Mike. Yes, one of the men asked about the hoodie. Okay, say it. He asked about the hoodie. Yeah, he said if I was wearing a hoodie. So you said, this is not no hoodie. This is a prayer show. You need one. <laughs> so I said, just like Moses. Just like Moses. How about the one that called in and said, said, um, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't believe in your religion. That's what he said. He said he didn't mean to be and then I said, this is not about religion. That's right. I said, I hate religion. And so does Jesus. I said, this is spiritual. I said, let me tell you something right now. The only one concerned with color are people. I said, God is, more, is concerned with you being saved or unsaved. An un- a non-believer or a believer. He looks on the inside of us while man looks at the outside. That's a problem today. But you said you watched it twice already. Yes, I watched it twice. And what's your feeling about it? Oh, good. I mean, I wish I watch it all the time, every day. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. So then one man come on and he said, um, 
um, um, he did I can't remember the part, but he said um, that he don't believe. You said, that's all right, too. Yeah. That's all right, too. Keep on listening. I said, that's okay. Keep on listening. Keep on listening. I said, I love all people. I said, I love all races and all people. I said, I'm like Jesus. My concern is if you're a believer or a non believer, you save the unsaved. That's my job. You hear me, y'all? Thank you. Now, let me confirm that what you just said. I'm laying in the bed two days ago. Lord spoke to me again. Know what he said? He said that that thing is not a one time thing I did. Oh, wow. He said to me that he's going to give me, I'm not going to pray my prayers. Do y'all know he's already shown me two more prayers in the Bible? I wrote them down, two more already. He told me that I'm going I'm to keep the name on it. And each week, I'm going to come out and I'm going to send it out. He said it's going to the earth and going to people to shut that murder spirit down in our community, among our people, in the United States of America. Y'all hear me? Give God praise up in here. Hallelujah. Give God praise up in here. Say supernatural. Y'all, we're talking about spiritual things, y'all. We're talking about spiritual things. Supernatural. Another thing, too. Get your arm ready. You know why? Because Vance Trump just reminded me that every year we ask the Lord to give us a supernatural flu shot. Amen. Flu season is supposed to be upon us, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. You can go take all the flu shots you want. You can't pay me to get a flu shot in my arm. That's fine. Never had one, never will get one. God told me don't come near that thing. Oh, and by the way, I have a preacher friend, licensed ordained minister, told me that he was going to get a flu shot a couple years ago. I said, Minister Leon, don't do it. I said, man, God got me releasing a supernatural flu shot that'll keep. He said, no, I'm going to go ahead and get it. I said, don't get it. Guess what? He came back to me. He said, man, I wish I had listened to you. He said, ever since I got that shot, I've been jacked. He said, ever since I got that shot, man, I've been messed up. He said, I wish I had listened to you. He said, I'll never take another. Do you hear me? Another thing. I, I, mean, I got you, Frazier. Another thing. Bad Strand came out recently on the flu shot. It was on TV that they were in some state. I don't have all my facts because I didn't go get it. But I saw the news that the flu shot was was making them sick. Everyone who took this particular one, it did something to them. And they all had the same symptoms from that particular flu shot. So they had to go in and Flip it. Do you hear me? So before we give you a supernatural flu shot from God, say it, Frazier. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Hold on. No, but come on up here, man. Come on, man. Bring the mic up here, Frazier. No, but come on, man. No, I want to hear it. Because a lot of people got flu shots which they had never gotten. Including probably some of y'all in here. And let me tell you another thing. Some people got flu shots and got the flu anyhow. Y'all hear me? No one in my house has gotten the flu. They may get attacked with a little virus, weakness when they got to stay in bed, some type of something attacking them. No flu. Week one, week two, with no flu. You understand me? Because this supernatural shot from God works. Nobody in my house. Can't remember the last time I had a flu. Probably 20 years ago. I don't know. But y'all will get that shot. A supernatural shot in your body from God. And you ain't getting no flu. I know that's bad. Ain't gonna say again, you ain't getting no flu. And I'm an English major. Please. What are you going to say about that flu shot? Um, well, five years ago, yeah. Jesse Body went through it. Hold on for a minute. He was arrested. I, hold on, man. I was just going to say, man. We don't know Jesse the Body been through. Yeah. I 
Man, I'm looking at wrestlers now, but back in the day, I liked Jesse the Body Venture. What about him? He was doing a, um, he had a TV show. Yes, he, he was doing wrestling. I forgot the name of it. Okay. But one of our own scientists said she fled the United States because she had a, um, a lady that was telling her that they about to do a massive, what they call it, a holocaust or something like that. Oh. They're going to be, they're going to put oh. stuff in flu shots, nasal spray, and something else. I wouldn't be surprised. They have us take it, and it's going to kill us slowly. It ain't going to kill us fast. Well, kill us slow. well, that's what they call now chemical warfare. Shot. But that's what they call chemical warfare. Y'all, let me show you how chemical warfare is real. Anyone ever heard of Agent Orange? Yes. 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 There are men of all colors all over this country that are still suffering. They're old now, and they never got their help from the VA for Agent Orange. This country tried to deny Agent Orange, but they couldn't because it's real. Many of the armed services people got shots that ruined their lives. Guess what? They had a man on the news who lived down in Florida last week. I don't know why they brought it up again, but guess what? He said, I got problems with my liver. I got problems with my kidneys. He said, I can't work. He said, I, I, I got problems with my heart. He said, everything in my body, there's something wrong with it. He said, why? He said, because they had this thing in the armed services that you come in and we'll pay you to be able to do this. Give you a shot and use some medication. He volunteered. He went and volunteered it. He said, you know the medical people? He volunteered. And it messed his health up for life. Whatever it is. This is why I pray for y'all to come off medication. This is why I want y'all to get medicine free. Uh oh, hold on here. Woo, woo, woo. Look at that. Woo, look at that. Oh, hold on, let me ask y'all a question. And now I can say it, Evangelist Crump. I can say it now. When I said Friday night, I never said it before. Let me see one hand. Of all of your life going to church, did you ever see a display of any medicine in the church? Come on, let me see your hand. Hold on. Well, that's legal medicine. Have you ever seen it in a church in your life? Not one hand. We can go to Joe Austin Church probably with 23,000 people ask the same question. Not one hand go up. TD Jakes with 15,000 probably not one hand go up. I'm not, hold on. Uh, let me get the other medicine. Uh, 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 are y'all ready for the other medicine? <laughs> Have y'all seen this medicine in a church before? Y'all ain't seen that medicine right here? Jesus Christ. Hold on. Surely. Surely. But this is legal now. Marijuana is legal now. You seen this in the church for medicine? Have you seen this on display in the church? Surely with all the smokers on the deacon board <laughs> and the trustee board in the, in the choir, surely you see some cigarettes pulled out of the church? No. No. No, you haven't. Now, this is what God gave me Friday night while I was preaching it here on Friday night. Y'all know that Satan has blessed many of our churches. Uh oh, I've done it now. I've done it now. I'm going to say it again. Satan, Lucifer, the devil, has blessed many of our Christian churches. Many of the mega churches have been blessed by Satan. Now that revelation came from God to me. He said, this is why 
many of the churches have gotten distracted from his spiritual power. This is why many churches have three to five services on one Sunday. So the devil bless them with all them people running in and running out so that they won't be able to lay hands on the sick. They don't have time. Churches don't have time to lay hands on you when they got three or four or five services on Sunday morning. They don't have time to cast that demon out of that person back there growling. Out of that person with a suicide demon. They don't have time to break those generational curses off you. I got to preach, preach 20 minutes and get you out of here because I got more money coming in. Yeah, I said it. Satan has prospered so many churches on purpose to keep them away from the supernatural power of God operating in them. Many pastors won't touch these things with a 10 foot pole. They're not going to do it. They're not going to take time to do it. They got to hear me your sweet, sweet service. A sweet sermon and get you out of here. Right now, some of them are on service number three or four. Already. <laughs> but hear me. So Satan, the book I read one time called The Drift of the Church. When the church, their church was first established, small from the grassroots, they lay hands on the sick. I have people come in here and say, oh my God, I haven't seen this in years. We used to do this. Have preachers, we used to do this. I used to be in a church that did this, but they stopped. Why did they stop? The drift of the church is, the number one reason is prosperity. Yeah. See, when the church was just church. making it, and just start our church, Come out in the name of Jesus. Right. Be healed of cancer. Be healed of sugar diabetes right now. Hey, my boy, said, my boy, said, my boy, my boy, said, my boy. But when the people started coming and they began to increase and the money began to increase, they began less and less power until they got to the point where there was no power anymore. I want to add a third, sir. I want to add a fourth, sir. Fifth. And smile them all the way to the bank. But then you got people in there with sugar diabetes. People in there with colon cancer and women, I tweeted it out this morning. 14,000 women died last year of ovarian cancer. 14,000 of you had a demon in your womanhood to kill you. Women. 21,000 women a year are diagnosed with it and the, the medical scientists say it and it's too late. By the time they diagnose you, you're a dead woman walking. That's a demon from the pit of hell. Satan hates your guts, woman, ever since his encounter with Eve. You're supposed to bruise his head, and he's going to bruise your heel, woman. He has a special interest. This is why when you have a demon messing with your womanhood, this is why you have stillbirths. This is why you have a premature birth. This is why you got sick babies with no arms, no leg, blind, have a brain, and have everything else in your womb because a devil is interfering with you. This is why some of y'all who are married can't have a baby, infertility demons, in your womanhood. And a church don't even mention your womanhood. I ain't never been one to mention womanhood in my life. They won't even mention your period that you have for three months. You done gone to your third month of the same bleeding and they ain't even showed you, my God, the one with the issue of blood yet. They ain't released it yet. Come on here, y'all. We must be on fire for God. We should have the blazing fire of God burning all over our church. The blazing fire of God to be burning all over the preachers, burning all over the pews, burning all over the building, burning all over the
cry, burn all over the usher, burn all over God's people. The fire, once you get this fire, we don't want to ever let it go out. A little while, they don't want that fire. Talk too much. Talk too much. What are you willing? To give everything. Cost you everything. Then we got people hooked on. Obedience. Hold on. Pastor comes in here. A pastor. Pastor comes in here. I bring up medicine. She pulls out a bag of medicine. I need some air now. I'm getting hot. Come on, I need some air now. Fire. Say it again. Fire. Come on, y'all. I'm going to use some air. Listen to me. She comes in here with her medicine. Like I told you, you know, you know what she said? I realized that I have gotten addicted. Jesus. I remember mean, she's the pastor. Can she say, I'm addicted? Jesus. I don't want to be addicted. And sure enough, she gets in our car with her grandson, and before she stopped the car, she passed out from the addiction. Oh, Lord. She went unconscious with a child in the car. Jesus. I believe it was God that kept her from, from not driving. What would have happened if she had been on the highway with her grandson and passed out? Lord Jesus. She passed out in the parking lot. Oh, God. He had to shake her. He had to shake her to get her up. This thing is serious, church. She's a pastor. Lord Jesus. Wow. I preach up Northwest. And I tell them about, about this. I preach about signs and wonders and miracles. And the pastor of that church on Kennedy Street, Northwest, at the old Kennedy Theater. He said, I have a confession to make. I said, what is it? He said, I can't go to sleep without sleeping pills. Jesus. In the preacher's own pills. Yes. In the preacher's own opiates. How many preachers are addicted? The painkillers. Just to get it preached to you. Hmm? I mean, a lot of them. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Miss Lord. Thank you. Even Prince and Michael Jackson. Yes. yes. Prince and Michael Jackson. OD off of legal medication. Opiates. Oh, by the way, the past Satan is moving. Y'all ready for this? You can keep it out the church if you want to. There's a new clientele for opiates now. Ooh, what? There's a new class of citizens getting addicted to painkillers now. Guess who they are? Just came out last week. High schoolers. What? You heard me. High schoolers getting addicted to painkillers. Oh boy. Not only that, guess who else? College athletes. Yes. Quarterback, college, nice guy. He hurt his shoulder in football. The doctors are handing out this stuff like it's no tomorrow. So the doctors gave him a painkiller for his shoulder. When the painkillers ran out, and he couldn't get no more painkiller medicine, he started taking heroin. And he was a college quarterback. Guess what, y'all? He went to rehab. And he still came out the same day he came out of rehab, I said the same day, didn't I? The same day he came out of rehab, he went and caught the same day and died that same day of an overdose trying to get some opiates in his body. He died the same day off of heroin because, guess what? He was addicted to painkillers. This thing is real, y'all. This thing is real. When your mama came here from West Virginia, from West Virginia, 
last week and spent a week with us. What her is that? Stop it here. Say, shall take this to live? Say, shall I take this to live? Live, live, live. I gotta take this to live. I gotta pop these to live, and I'm a child of God. I gotta pop these to live, and I believe the word of God that says, by his stripes. Ye are healed. But Satan loved to bring us some symptoms. Church folk deny that they're healed because of a symptom. Church folk doubting God's healing power. Uh, and you got some people saying, that was when the disciples of old, there's no more miracles now. Let me tell you something right now. Did the Holy Ghost come? Then there are miracles. Did the Holy Ghost come? Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. I read something last night that caught my eye in a book. It said that the disciples of Christ had some problems. They followed him on top of the 12. Yeah, yeah. They hung out with him, yeah. slept in the same room, yeah. saw the miracle. But guess what? Some of them denied him. Scab when trouble came, am I right? right. Didn't believe, doubted, am I right? Right. right? But when the day of Pentecost came oh and the Holy Ghost fire fell, he said, Wait here, carry here to the promise of the Father is coming. Just wait. Oh, and I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So when the fire came and the baptism of the Holy Ghost came on them, guess what? They became real followers of Jesus then. Guess what? They didn't run no more. They were bold of them. When they, once they got their fire in them, guess what? Ooh, they didn't die anymore. Once they got their fire with them, guess what? They died for him. They went and told everybody about him then. There's something about getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost of fire before you get bold enough ooh, to serve him like yeah. you're supposed to. Yeah. You got to get the Holy Ghost. You got to get the Holy Ghost. I got to get the Holy Ghost. And all of me to come off of this, I got to get the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to stand for toxic meditation to dwell in the same temple as him. How are you going to dwell in the same time when I got the Holy Ghost? Come on. Say that. Mm-hmm. Not going to happen. Right. Ain't going to run with a cigarette. It's legal. It's not, it's not an opiate. No, it's a spirit from the pit of hell. Yeah. Why am I going to have tar and nicotine? Hold on. Hold on. Years ago, I heard this. How do you expect to cast a demon out of somebody? How do you expect to lay hands on somebody and heal them from, us, from sickness and disease? And you can't even take authority over a, over a, a, a piece of tobacco. <laughs> With some tar and nicotine. But yet, you don't take authority over the powers of darkness. <laughs> It is deep in. It's real in the ground. You're supposed to be taking authority over the powers of darkness anywhere that they come. You're supposed to be able to lay hands on folk and they live and not die. And you can't get power enough in you to say, to put this out of your hand. And don't even go to the lottery ticket. <laughs> And don't even go to the scratch off. No, don't even go to the scratch off. I'm holy. I'm sanctified. I believe God. Sir, could you play uh, 666 for me, please, straight? Can you play 666 for me, sir? 
Yeah. Three dollars. Three dollars on six, six, six. I had a dream last night. So you go in there and play the mark of the beast. And if you win, ooh, your life is going to be jacked. Everything you touch is going to be cursed. Oh, what's the, what's the number for death? I believe it's 715. I dreamed of somebody dying last night. But you just seen in the choir yesterday. <laughs> you just ushering people into the sanctuary yesterday. I saw you run around the church shouting and saying, I'm healed, I'm healed. But yet you want to run over there to the hall and gamble. Church! The powers of darkness love churches with no power. It loves people from churches with no power. It loves people who don't want the spiritual things of God because if you don't want the spiritual things of God, then guess what? You're going to get his stuff. His stuff. Now here we are. Oh. That's right. Come in. No, that's right. I told you I needed you on Sunday, Miss Long. Just remind me. I told you I want you to get that mic. Uh uh, you got to tell this. Ooh, we'll give it to Miss Long. Uh uh, you got to tell this testimony. Because this is real. Um, Pastor was talking about pharmaceutical. Well, my grandmother, um, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she was wandering off. And she lived with my aunt and lived in the county, in the country, I mean, serious country. And she would walk out the house, leave, and they wouldn't find her for hours. Ooh. So my aunt refused to believe that her mother was had Alzheimer's. And so what she did was took her to another doctor. And when the doctor, my aunt was to bring all of her medication. Hold on. Came. On this new doctor, they said bring every medicine that you were taking. Right. So when she got to the doctor and he saw all of this medication that, that she was taking, uh, he said, she doesn't have all harm. She doesn't taking. have it. This medication has taken her out of her mind. Wow. Hold on. The doctor said that she really don't have it. It's, but it was the medication that was messing with her mind. And the other doctor diagnosing it as Alzheimer's and the medication he was poisoning her mind with is what was doing it. Right. So when my, when they took her off of all of the medication, she came back to her senses. She didn't have Alzheimer's. She knew everybody. Reggie, you hear that? How old they was and all of this. And wow. So she came back to herself. And she, she passed away, but it was because of internal bleeding, but it had nothing to do with it. She, she didn't have Alzheimer's once they switched off. No Alzheimer's. No Alzheimer's. Thank you. Lots of medication. My Ooh. Ooh. Dementia. I hate dementia. I hate Alzheimer's. And I hate that flesh eating disease called diabetes. I want diabetes gone out your body. And guess what, y'all? I get a phone call this morning. Pastor, I want to come to church. But I can't stop urinating on myself. Pastor, I want to come to church, but I can't stop peeing on myself. I'll tell you something right now. Thank God for those intercessors that were in here this morning. Ooh, when I walked into this church this morning, they were walking these aisles. They were exalting the Lord. They were touching all these seats to bless them. They were throwing up the heavenly language and they were all over this church. When I walked in, my God started getting drunk in the spirit when I walked in. I felt the power of that thing. Guess what, y'all? I couldn't even go to my office. I went and dropped my briefcase off. I couldn't even sit in my office. I had to come back out here and soak this up. And while I'm sitting here soaking up, I get the call. So I said, Lord, all of this glory is in here. Release it to her bladder. Release it to her mm, kidney. Release it to her bowels. Uncontrollable. Do you know what you would feel like everywhere you went? 
you sit down and pee in the chair. Or have a poop in it. And you're a grown human being. You know how many people are going through that? The doubt ain't enough. Y'all, if y'all don't get this stuff, if y'all don't stop praying for the sick, if y'all don't get this Bible, if you don't stop praying more, worshiping more, come to church more, follow God, if you don't be bold enough for the Lord, then who? Who will go for us? Yes. Who shall I send? When are you going to say, here am I, Lord? Yes. Then said I, here am I, Lord. Send me. Yes. 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 Send me. Yes. I ain't smoking no more. Send me. I ain't drinking no more. Send me. I'm not smoking reefer anymore. Send me. I'm not having sex out of wedlock anymore. Send me. I'm not a man sleeping with a man anymore. Send me. I'm not a woman sleeping with a woman anymore. Send me. I'm not cussing anymore. Send me. I'm not just watching pornography. I'm not masturbating anymore. Send me. I'm not gambling anymore. Send me. I'm not sitting around watching just any old thing come on TV anymore. Right. I'm not one of those Christians that was sitting at home Wednesday nights that are coming to church trying to see what Empire is doing. <laughs> you're a Christian, you're watching that, you're ashamed of yourself. That's right. That's right. I don't care you don't like me no more. That's right. Come on now. I've been delivered from people. That's right. That's right. Say it, Pastor. Mm. And guess what? I'm not running for any office. <laughs> Vote for me. <laughs> no. I said it was said again. If you're watching Empire, mm -hmm. you're sitting at home watching Hottie or whatever her name is, Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> then you are in error. And some of y'all in here is like all the other Christians sitting at home Wednesday night watching that crap from hell. Oh, oh Pastor, you've been a fanatic. Okay, well, let's see how fanatic the Bible is. The Bible says, in all that you do, do it to the glory of God. Yes. Hold on. In everything, do it to the glory of God. When you watch Empire, you're watching everything that's opposite of the commandments of God. Come on now, say it. In empire, they got every sin known to mankind going on. Yeah. And you say, I'm a Christian. I'm not doing those things, but it's okay to watch them. Wrong. Wrong. Because there are such things as spirits. And the Bible said that Satan is the, the God of this world, but he also said he is the prince. Satan is the prince. He is the prince. He is the prince of the power. Hold on now. What power? Power of the air. Of oh, the air. What's in the airway? Television. Internet. So, here you are. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm on fire for God. But I can watch people cuss, uh -huh. fornicate, lie, steal, kill. So what's happening is why you're watching it. Guess what you can't do? You can't hear from God. Because now Satan is blocking your spirit. See, it comes into your mind first. This is coming right. to, but then from your mind going to your spirit. So your spirit is now getting contaminated. Hallelujah. Praise. Come get to me, go. Come on. And say, so have an hour yet? No. Two o'clock. Okay. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Now get this. <laughs> Who are you watching? But I don't partake. You're watching people drink liquor, but you don't drink. So in other words, you are now partaking in those evil deeds. That's right. That's right. If, hold on, let me get this to you. Ready? He just told me to tell you this. The, the TV is coming into your living rooms, coming to your bedrooms, coming to your house, all right? Yeah. What you're watching is coming into your ear hole and coming to the house, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Then why did the Bible say this? Many are entered into the world. Many deceivers are entered into the earth who believe not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Oh, you better hear me now. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. He said, there are many who transgress and mean breaking all moral mm -hmm. and godly rules. Yes, yes. And they transgress and they abide not in the doctrine of Christ. They have not Christ, then they have not the Father. He that has Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come in, here we go. Here it's coming to your TV, coming to your house. If there come, oh, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Ooh. What was Empire praising God Wednesday night? <laughs> bring him not into your house. Let me see. Did Cookie throw down on her knees at the altar? Oh, she was at the altar, but it wasn't godly. Was her son and that husband of hers, well, he's supposed to be, did he lift his hands to praise God? Whosoever bringing not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. It's so terrible that God said, you can't say, ooh, that was good. Have a, can't wait till next week. Have a good day till next week. <laughs> Neither be him God's speed. Because if you do that, you are now a partaker of their evil deeds. And you say it. I say you are now a partaker. It's in 2 John. Now you're a partaker. Right. It's coming to your spirit, coming to your house. We got children in the house. Guess what? Now, everything in your house is a partaker of it. That means that if Satan gets his stuff in your house, there are going to be some curses following it. Right. All of a sudden, now your money's not right. right. All of a sudden, now your mind is not right. All of a sudden, now, from, I don't know where you're wearing. And I don't know where it comes from fear. You lay in the bed and you look like you're fearful. Panic attacks are coming. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, people in the house are arguing like crazy. You don't know where it's coming from. It's coming because you got the prince of the admin coming in your house. And you're a Christian. Talking on fire for God. Flame and fire. Flame and fire. If I got flame and fire, I got no business that strange fire coming to my bedroom, to my living room, and to my family room. Strange fire will mess you up. Strange fire comes from hell. You can't compromise the holy fire yes. to sample strange fire Hallelujah. not for a second. Hallelujah. It was only one time. That's all it took. Uh -huh. I don't do that dead. I don't do what they're doing, but they are entertaining me. Whoa, did you see it? I saw preachers. I'm in the barber shop. One day last year when it was on. I'm in the barber shop. And the ministers in the bottom side. Oh, did you see Empire in that door? <laughs> oh, I can't wait. And then they start talking about the what's going on. Well, I'm sitting there, so they preach the gospel. Do you see how ignorant Paul said, I would not have you ignorant? He said, Satan don't give him a foothold. Many of you are in unawares. And he's ready to trick you. You is unaware of the spiritual repercussion. Y'all better get this thing together. If you want to be strong, if you want to be healthy, if you want to have a sound mind, sound bone, if you want to have sound money, sound relationship, if you want to have a sound job, you want to have a sound family, sound children, then you better stay spiritual with God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Ain't no power in the flesh. When you watch the empire, you watch anything like that, you're in the flesh. And once you come about the spirit, once you come about that fire, come out the fire, you in the flesh, you're dead meat. You're dead meat. You're dead meat. And you'll go into the store and buy this. I've been in underwear. Friday went to, I'm a 7 Eleven man. I always go 7 Eleven. I've been to Wawa probably one time in 10 years. The only time I went to Wawa was when I went down to preach in Norfolk, Virginia, and the hotel was in Chesapeake. We went to Wawa and they got a whole lot of good stuff. So Friday, I said, you know what? It's 7 Eleven right across the street from it in Waldorf on Branch Avenue. I said, you know what? I'm going to go to Wawa. I'm going to do something different today. So I went to Wawa wall and I walked in. Get a picture of this. When I walked in, this is called Zap's Voodoo Chips. You keep it angry here. The world ain't playing with us. Voodoo Chips. 17 children to you. How many family came in and thought it was funny about Voodoo Chips? Believe me. Got it? Oh, it's real pretty bad. Oh, it's real pretty. Real decorative. Real colorful. Yeah, I got boodle dolls with pins in them on here. Oh, y'all. Probably. You get it? Hold on now. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to read something to you. Uh-uh. Now. Now. Now, get this. Louisiana got a lot of problems. Am I right? <laughs> Katrina came where? To New Orleans. What state is New Orleans in? Louisiana. And the Mardi Gras in what state? Louisiana. I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to say it on Periscope and I'm going to say it on Facebook Live. When Katrina hit New Orleans, God showed me that many of the great big millionaire pastors with mega churches made a big mistake with New Orleans after Katrina was over. Many of them did not do what they were supposed to do. Guess what they did? They did what man do. I'm not even going to call their names out. But, they're, but, but every name, you know them. And the ones that didn't have a big name, same thing for them. But I'm talking about the ones that had a big soapbox to stand on and the whole world to hear you speak. Know what they did? When Katrina came through, the flood was gone. They came down and delivered water, food, and clothing. But not one of them said, New Orleans, you are the number one voodoo state in the United States of America. You have centuries of voodoo root doctors who do in your generation. New Orleans, you are known for voodoo. Mm -hmm. At the football games, you advertise voodoo. On the beer commercial, you got a voodoo man with skulls around his head talking about the beer. You are voodoo. Why did the preacher come down and say, let me tell you, I got a word from God. If my people who are called by my name Yes. I forget your sins yes. and I heal you all. I heal Louisiana. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
pay me real good. My God, my God. I put that look under my foot. That's right. Amen. He said, he should have said, you are as a state. Pray for forgiveness and have a nationwide repentance. Repent and renounce your voodoo spirits. Renounce and denounce satanic forces. Yeah, yeah. And you won't teach your child and your grandchild what your grandma and your mom yeah. taught you. You'll turn from voodoo yeah. and declare and repent. But you don't have it anymore. But they didn't do that. Not one of them did. And here's what happened now. You better hear me now. I'm saying this because on this chip, who who on this chip? New Orleans, cattle style voodoo. New Orleans, cattle style voodoo chips. Are you kidding me? They just had rain, thousand year rain, huh? And more floods. The land hasn't been healed yet. That's why the, the governor can't do nothing. Obama can't do nothing. Those preachers, Paul Morton can't do nothing in New Orleans. The Black Brothers can't do jack until they tell the people repent. We gotta spread it. Clean up that liquor. By the way, so you will know that the person who bought that in here was an alcoholic. Alcoholic. Said he was drinking two fifths a day by himself. All alone in his house, Satan had him. He saw demons in his house. He said demons was around him while he was drinking his liquor. They would talk to him. He keep on drinking. Just someone told about heaven's death, and he came up in here and got delivered and set free. And when he got his his alcohol and bought it, he had said, "And all said, I don't drink anymore." In Jesus' name. That's what you all to say. I don't practice voodoo anymore. I don't practice spells anymore. I don't do incantations anymore. I don't use these voodoo voodoo dolls on chips. And you gonna sell it in your store like it ain't huh? I'll give me the uh, candy, Miss Long. Uh, hold on. Now, now that one periscope in uh, Facebook. Oh. Uh, Where is it? S. Ms. Long. Yeah. Go to the first, up to first lady so she can tell you what I want. Because it's a good time to bring it out. It's a good time to miss fingers. Demon treats. Y'all, demon treats. Oh my God. I love chocolates. I'm going to eat me some almond jaws all I want. I like that. First lady love uh, Mr. Goodball. <laughs> Favorite like uh, 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 what did they call Snickers. And I also love M&M with nuts. M&M with nuts. Yes. But guess what? <laughs> Who went into the store and bought the same candy, Demon Treats? Y'all keep playing around with this stuff here. Demon, come on. Demon treats. Oh, we can be ready. You're not going to be so gullible for the world because you bring demon treats into your house. You bring demon treats. Hold on for me. You bring voodoo chips from New Orleans and demon trips and demon tricks. No, treats. Treats, treats from Satan into your house. You're going to get a voodoo visit. And you're going to get a demon visit somewhere 
in your life. Do you hear me? I'm going to teach you not to be tricked. Amen. Not to take something that's, oh, that's harmless. I wonder, how many Christians when they say, I wonder what these taste like? <laughs> oh, believe me, they were bought or they would be on the shelf. They took them home to see what they taste like. How did y'all want it? <laughs> Honey, honey, did you talk to the pastor like I asked you to call the pastor? <laughs> yeah, I can talk to him. What did he say? He said, he'll see us when we get to the church. <laughs> honey, John, what did he <laughs> New Orleans. Carol style food. Oh, they got a little dog. Oh, they got voodoo dog. One, got one, two, three. Got a, hold on. They got a pen. Yeah. I was going to say a pen in his leg, but it looked like it's in another area. Men. It looked like it's a bullseye. Don't eat these men. Then there's another pen in the heart. Then there's another pen in the shoulder and one in the arm. Lord have mercy. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over all voodoo spirits and we now ask you, Lord, to send Holy Ghost Father to New Orleans all over Louisiana right now. And that they will do what you just told me to say today. That they will uh, ask the Lord to forgive them for this. Hold on. The Bible said, how do you break generational curses? This is all they have to do. Y'all ready? It's, it's, it's sweet and simple. It's all they have to do. First, they have to come out publicly. New Orleans, Louisiana. And they got to publicly say, Lord, I confess my sins. Please forgive me for every sin I've ever committed, including all the food that's been in my family. Lord, I repent for my sins. Lord, please forgive my ancestors. Please forgive my forefathers and my foremothers for their sins and all the voodoo that they did or that they sought after. I repent on behalf of them. In Jesus' name. Okay. And I renounce Satan and his wicked voodoo ways. In Jesus' name. And guess what will happen? The the floods will be gone. The thousand year rain won't come back no more. The murder rate will go down. Jesus. And a lot of changes will be made where there's voodoo involved. People stop putting stuff in people's food. People will stop getting dogs and snakes and eggs and having all types of rituals. Thank you, Ms. Long. Because guess what? Five minutes ago, he came to me. And you remember that I gave you. Might as well give it because more of them never heard this before. Let me tell you about New Orleans and voodoo. If I'm born and raised in New Orleans, and my mom was working voodoo, and my grandma was working, my aunts were working it, I'm used to them being in the house, but I'm used to them getting all types of portions together. I'm used to them doing stuff, checks, doing stuff. You got me? Okay. Here's what happened. Let me show you how spiritually ignorant America is. I'm going to show you how ignorant. If the people out there were getting the teachings you get, 
you wouldn't have a seat. I probably had to get 10 services a day. Not. <laughs> They'd be outside and I put a, 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 a speaker out there in the parking lot. First one get in, get the seat. But guess what they did? You ready? So I'm in New Orleans and I'm used to voodoo. I've been taught to use voodoo. I know how to work it. But here comes Katrina. Flood us out. And they started moving people out of New Orleans and moving them into Detroit, Maryland, Philly, D.C., Texas, Mississippi, Virginia, Florida, wherever they were moving them. You got me? But hold on. And people were taking them into their homes to live trying to do a good deed without any spiritual gift called discerning of spirits. They had no idea. They saw the mother with the children. They saw this person and that person and they brought them to their home. Now, they're living with you. Hallelujah. And let me say this. And then Trinity got you. And praise got you. Oh, thank you. Now they're coming to your home. Got me? I'm in at the table with you. Taking baths in your house. Out of my clothes in the house. Riding with you in the car. Talking with you. I now live with you and I'm from your home. Hold on. Late at night. While the homeowner and her family are asleep. Somebody who's used to voodoo is going to be in their bedroom behind closed doors working some voodoo in your house. You don't expect that and you don't know that. But if I do voodoo, I'm going to do voodoo. No matter where you take me. This is what I do. This is what I know. So now I want some voodoo for a, for a reason. Why well, I want this. I'm in a new town. I don't have this. My house is gone. My family's separated. So now I'm in the bedroom. 12 midnight. 1 a.m. in the morning. And I'm putting together some stuff in your house. In your house. They want to hear it. No, I'm just telling you. I'm in your house, Martin. I'm from New Orleans. I've been taught voodoo since I was a child. Why do you think I'm going to come in your house in Maryland, in Washington, D.C., and not wear voodoo behind closed doors where you can't see me? I'm going to do it. And guess what? You're going to pay the price for me working it. Because now your house is contaminated. But you did me a favor. You bought me from the flood. With your spiritually ignorant self. And now there are curses in your house. And you don't understand what's going on. Just give me 10 minutes, you're ready to stop anyway. Because I think they have enough to, to, to take home and ponder. See all of that tonight. <laughs> See the here? See all that. Are y'all hear me? Now, here's what I want to do. I want God to release the fire before we go. I want the fire of God, the blazing fire, to come onto you. I want to burn out. Any voodoo in your bloodline out of you. And the generation after you. I want to burn out all sorcery, all psychic hotliners, all, all tarot card reading crap, all palm reading devils out of you. Some of y'all got attacks on you because of those doors that were open. And when you open by you, it was owned by your great, 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 great grandma. 
and your great, 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 great aunt. And your great, 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 great granddaddy. That's right. And you're paying the price for it today. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why am I, why am I going through this? Why everybody dying early? Why everybody got cancer? Why everybody got diabetes in my family? Why, why four or five of us got dementia? How come three of us in our family on dialysis? How come uh, four or five of us on some type of antidepressant medicine? How come some of us try to commit suicide? How come we alcoholics? How come I got five boys in my family in prison? Why? Because some door is open that you don't know of. And have not been dealt with by the power of God. But when the power of God come to it, it can't run through your bloodline. It can't run through your family no more. We can shut that thing down, root it out, cast it out in Jesus' name. Tell it can't come back no more. Tell it where to go. Take authority over it. It has no power. Every weapon of God. Dead, 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 dead. Go in Jesus' name. Ah, all of a sudden I'm healed. All of a sudden my mind is right. All of a sudden my money is right. All of a sudden my children are right. All of a sudden my life is right. All of a sudden I'm ready to live. Nobody like Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop playing. Stop compromising. That's right. Hallelujah. Tell that child they don't play custom music in their house because they never hear That's room. right. Hallelujah. We're there. The spirit contaminating your spirit and everything else in your house. Get out of your bedroom. That's right. I'm almost finished. Jesus. Get ready because I'm going to release it. Just let me have one. I don't believe that all those pastors didn't tell you all is that. Big name. With jets. Water ain't going to deliver nobody. Food ain't going to deliver nobody. And money can't cast out a devil. All that's good in this place. But there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when you have to call on the power of God yes. in the supernatural. Yes. And you're going to say, Lord, anoint me for the battle. Here am I, Lord. I'm ready to fight. I won't be by myself. I won't be fighting alone. Because there are more that be with me. There are more that be with me. There are more that be with me from heaven. be with them. I got angels on an open heaven. I got the blood of Jesus. I got the Holy Ghost fire. I got the baptism of the Spirit in me. Tongue talking, blood washing. Man, son of a gun. With the word of God. In the name of Jesus. How dare you sit down on all that power? How dare you sit down? Then you get in your car and play music that say himself blessed. No more. No more. No more. You see that no more. No more. All I can say about what Now, we're getting out here early today because, because I'm going to release this and I'm done. God, guess what, y'all? So much has gone out of me just in this today. I am on a roll. Well, I'm on a spiritual roll. And I cannot be denied. 
and you listen, believe and receive, if you learn some stuff, it's going to give you longer life. The devil can't kill you when you know too much. They can't kill you so easy. company, Shisha is a big company. Guess what they're selling? They're, ooh, Voodoo Shisha Caribbean Curse. <laughs> Mr. Fingers, how is this used? Is it like, how is it used? Oh, okay. Oh, something like a bomb. Oh, bomb. It's like a bomb. That's it. They have different flavors. And young people buy this. Thank you, ushers. We're on our way out. They buy this to get high with, to help with the party smoking a bomb. Uh, let me give you some of the uh, titles. You ready? They have 
Bewitch Blueberry. <laughs> Wicked Watermelon. The one I'm holding in my hand, Caribbean Curse. They got one called Jungle Dream. Possessed Peach. Hold up. Black Magic. Purple Days. Mint Mojo. And sinful, Lord have mercy, sinful strawberry. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, they say young people buying this like crazy, having their little smoking party. Come on, people. We got to save the United States of America, young and old people. We got to save the Christians. We got to save the church people through the power of God from, the, from demonic power such as this. And voodoo potato chips. Demon treat candy. All right, let's get ready to roll it out. Hold on, get that first. Get that done. Now, hold up, huh? Okay, gotcha. Now, here's what I want. Pray. Come get this from her for me. Because, because we're going to finish out. Trendy, come get it. Uh-uh, Trendy, don't feel like you're sleeping. Come on, baby. <laughs> come on, get it. Because they did overtime. They did 20 minutes of overtime. Get in my hand, y'all. Yeah. Periscope and Facebook Live had to get this information today. But they will love the way we're going out. They're going to need what we get ready to do as we're going to release this to everybody who's watching on Facebook live and everybody watching on Periscope. Another thing, tell all your people, see it on a delay. It'll be on for 24 hours on Facebook live, on Facebook and Periscope. This is too good for them not to get. And call all your relatives in New Orleans and tell them to watch it. Call all your relatives in Louisiana and tell them to watch it. And call some of those big name pastors that you know that took food and drink and everything else that man could put inside his body and on his body rather than what could go into his soul and his spirit. Oh, okay, I'm going to get her. Okay, I got Mother uh, Porn Dexter. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless the sacraments too. By his stripes we are healed. 39 stripes on his back. When you eat the bread. And life is in the blood. This is what you do. Cut this off now. I'm signing off right now because I'm getting ready to do something. Just stay there with you. Just cut it off now.